Hi, my name is Bob. Welcome to another episode of Bob's Woodshop. If this is your first time here, thanks for tuning in today and please check out some of my other videos. Today's project is a 3D rifle case. It's a uh, custom gun box I've been working on for several weeks now. It's got a lot of features and I want to show you how I built it. So stay tuned. Okay, let's get this project started. This project involves quite a bit of trapezoids and there's actually two different trapezoid designs that one must do. So once you're done cutting up all the trapezoids you gotta start taping them together and this requires quite a bit of blue tape. So you have to be very careful when you're taping this all together and this is what it starts looking like in order to get the pattern. The pattern I'm working on now is the one for the top of the box and this is a really cool 3D design that I've uh, done in the past on cutting boards but I'm uh, doing it this time with just veneers and these are some of the details. This is my little taping fixture uh, to get the little pieces of tape you just make little slices across here then I tape them onto my hand and then I eventually uh, tape the pieces of veneer. The wood that I'm using is maple, walnut, and cherry. So again this is my little taping fixture and like I said you need two different designs. So I use these uh, visual indicators of what pieces to place where and quite honestly even with those it's easy to put the wrong piece in the wrong block so you gotta really be careful with that here's what it's looking like once it's all taped up it's one big monolithic piece right now and I just think that design is just gorgeous I love this type of work uh, primarily I'm a wood turner but lately I've been getting into these uh, veneering projects and very happy I did this is my buddy Craig Newton so over at his shop he's the one who got me into this so I've already taken all the blue off the bottom the blue tape off the bottom of this and this is the veneer tape on top of it uh, we've spread out the glue and we're now putting it in the vacuum bag the piece stays in the vacuum bag for at least an hour and once you take it out of the bag you take out any uh, pieces of glue that might have come up through the seams and quite honestly the glue helps fill in some of the seams Okay, so back to my shop. This is where I'm cutting up the cherry wood for the case itself. I did not include the footage of me milling the boards down to size, but it's basically half inch by five inches wide by 43 inches long, and the sides are 10 and a half inches long. Uh, so if you want to see that process, you can look at my shotgun or my other rifle case video that I have. And here I'm just cutting the uh, dovetails. This is the peach tree dovetail jig. You always cut the tails first. And then once the tails are done, then you can cut the pins. And here's how you mark the pins to make sure that you're dead on. Okay, so what I'm doing here is a initial dry fit. I like making my joints very tight. Um, so I'm just tapping this in with a plastic dead blow hammer. Once you tap the dovetails in the first time, then the second, third, fourth time that you do this, you can get these in uh, much easier. But I do like a nice tight fit. So once I'm satisfied that the box is fitting together well then I have to use my shaper table on a half inch cutter in order to make grooves for the top and bottom panels. The top panel obviously I used the half inch plus the veneer of 32nd of an inch on each side and on the bottom I just used a half inch so on the first one for the top I had to actually do one pass and then a slightly wider pass 
to account for the two 132nd inch pieces. This is all basic straight woodworking, nothing really difficult about this at all. If you got the right equipment and a little bit of experience, this is a very simple project. So you might notice as I'm going through this project, I have several different shirts on. That's because this project took probably about two weeks as I was doing this on and off. And I took probably a day or two for each the top and the bottom of the 3D design work. The box I put together in two days. So my shaper table is built into my table saw. This is a grizzly table saw and really nice. It's a three horsepower saw. But I mean, if you didn't have a shaper table, you could easily just do this with a router. So here's the fit of the top. And I had to do a little bit of adjustment on the width and the length in order to get that fitting in there just right. And so prior to glue up, I'm doing a little bit of sanding. It's certainly best to do all the sanding ahead of time. This veneer is actually very thin, so all I really did with that is hit it with 180 with my Festool sander and then a light sanding with 240. And that is very smooth. Love this sander. This sander produces almost zero dust. If you're in the market for a sander, I would certainly recommend buying this one. Okay, so now I'm starting the glue up process. When I do my glue ups, I like getting a little paper plate and putting some glue out there. And then I like using little acid solder brushes in order to get in all the dovetails. So this whole process took maybe 10 minutes to do. Real easy. The entire project probably took close to 40 hours because of the most of the time was spent with the veneering. So, as usual, just take your time, have a little bit of patience. I also like having a wet rag when I'm gluing up, just to wipe off any excess. I'm in the uh, mode that wipe off the glue while it's still wet. Some guys like to wait till it dries a little bit and then scrape it off. But uh, that's a little piece of wet t-shirt that I've got there. Making sure the joints are nice and tight. A little bit of wipe. And uh, getting ready to put the the top on. So that's actually the top of the box, and the that side that you see there is the bottom of the box. So not only do you get a very cool effect when you're first looking at the case, but when you open it up, you get another complete surprise. It's very nice. So this may look easy, and actually it is, but like I said before, I did have to make some adjustments of cutting the top and the bottom to the exact width and length so that this all fits together just right. And again, using a little acid brush and some glue, getting in all the fingers of the dovetails here. One nice thing about dovetails is they're self-squaring. You really don't need to square it after it's done. The dovetails will take care of the squaring process. And when you're gluing in panels like this, whether you're making a top and a bottom of a case like this or, say, doors, uh, you never glue in the panels. you got to let some room for expansion and contraction as the seasons change. Now, these pieces of wood are, uh, this one, the bottom here is plywood and the substrate I used on the top is a piece of MDF so not quite as critical on this but still I don't glue in panels just making sure I got everything done I like gluing both surfaces both the pins and the tails So the glue up is relatively simple. I just used a couple quick clamps. I used one on the, the top side, one on the bottom side, 
and then again on both ends. And then I let it dry overnight. It actually sets in about an hour, but after glue ups, I usually let them dry overnight. So here's what it's looking like with uh, the clamps on. And like I said before, I just love this 3D design. I just can't get enough of this stuff. It's uh, very attractive. Here's what it's looking like also on its end. And it looks different based on different angles that you look at it. So the next process step is you got to cut the lid off. So what I did is I set the fence so that the uh, width of the lid was about an inch and a quarter and the way to release the top or the lid you have to cut both ends I cut the ends first and then I cut the uh, the lengthwise piece off just got to be very careful make sure the box doesn't come away from the fence you can see a lot of uh, sawdust maybe a little bit of smoke coming out of the uh, kerf cherry tends to burn very easily so typically after cutting cherry I've got a little bit of burning burn marks to clean up and here what I've done I took a paint stick here and drilled a couple holes and put pencils in there and this helps keep the uh, kerf of the saw uh, open so that the lid and the case don't pinch the blade so it's much much easier to do something like this versus trying to make an individual top and bottom this is really how boxes are made okay so now I'm going to start applying the finish and I'm doing everything with a coat of shellac shellac is a perfect base coat for any type of either paint or film finish like polyurethane or lacquer. I'm going to be putting lacquer on here shortly, but uh, whenever I put the finish on, I always call that the money shot because it just brings out the wood uh, in such a spectacular uh, manner. So this is just rattle can from Home Depot. And here's the bottom design doing the same thing. Another nice thing about shellac and lacquer are they dry very quickly. So you can put several coats on pretty quickly. The shellac is recommended to let it dry for an hour. And for lacquer, they recommend at least 10 or 15 minutes in between coats. And you can hit it with a light coat of uh, sandpaper in between uh, the coats of lacquer. So this is nice, you know you're coming down home stretch when you start putting the finish on. And there's the, this is a Minwax lacquer, I've had very good success with this. And I think I used one can of lacquer on this project because I put on several coats and just a little bit of the shellac. These cans are about 10 bucks each. Here I got to put the piano hinge on. And I don't know how many screws that is, but it's a bunch. So I drilled little pilot holes for each one, a little starter. These screws are just not long enough to go through the uh, cherry. So I just had just enough room to spare and not did not have to cut off the tips of these screws. Of course, screwing this many screws in with a regular screwdriver would take a long time. And, of course, you just use your drill and a screwdriver bit in order to get these in. So the next process step is flocking. I got four different colors of flocking. I thought red would... Uh, very much offset the colors 
that are in the underside here. So basically flocking is a two step process. You have to paint on this uh, red paint and I, I've got four colors but I'm using the red and you paint that on very gently and carefully so you don't come up over the top and I think I only came up over the top on one little piece down on the left hand side but you, know, you get a nice thick coat of this on there and then you can start applying the flocking. The flocking is a very fine material that ends up looking like felt once it's sprayed on and I'll be showing you that process here shortly. So maybe this took about I don't know 10 minutes to coat the inside of this with the red. A clever name on the can there. Flock it. And I think that is appropriate. Lay this on nice and thick. You see I'm being very careful uh, right here. You know, just come up. You wouldn't want to be going side to side here. You want to be going from the bottom to the top. And here's the flocking material and the flocking applicator. Not exactly a clean process. Maybe I could have used the funnel, but it blows off real easy. So put a bunch of flock in there and you can see this is spraying out very easily. I've got two different saddles in here and the reason I did that was I wanted this gun case to handle multiple guns. So for instance on the top there I'm going to be able to use the case for my M1 Garand and other long rifles and the saddle on the bottom there I can use for shorter rifles. Here I had to drill a couple holes for some pieces of hold down wood and I'm using a ratcheting tap wrench with a quarter 20 tap in it and you'll see shortly uh, I put a thumb screw in here on top of a little piece of wood and that'll hold the uh, gun in place. On the left hand side of the case I just have like a little sleeve back there. So I've got to tuck the butt stock into the left hand side and then the rifle will be locked in place with uh, these saddles depending what gun I have in there. You notice there is I used some pieces of cherry and I put a washers on the top and the bottom of the cherry. Primarily the one on the bottom is so that the this little lever does not interfere with the flocking on top of the other side of the saddle. So you see there's that little gap there. Ooh, look at that. Alright, so here's what it's looking like. Uh, now, honestly, at this point in time, I don't have the latches. Uh, so those are not going to come in for another week. But I wanted to get the video up, so it's not quite complete, but almost. I've got the chain on. I've got the rubber feet on the bottom. And, yeah, that's what it's looking like. So I'm real happy with this. I hope you enjoyed watching this project. Okay, so you guys know to drill. If you're a long-time subscriber, you've seen a couple of these videos before. I've got a shotgun and a black powder rifle case that I did and actually that's what inspired me to make this one and you know to drill in terms of liking comment and subscribing and go ahead and share it with your friends I'd like to get some new subscribers and I certainly do appreciate your time so as always I hope this inspired you to make something like this and you know have fun in your shop stay safe in your shop and thanks again for spending a few minutes of your day with me so until next time, I'll see you on another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Bye-bye.